Okay, you guys hear me okay? Yes. Okay, uh, we'll get started then. Thank you guys for coming. Uh, I know it's a busy busy time of year for you guys uh, 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 just coming up. So uh, we will, I'm just going to ask each of you to briefly introduce yourself for about 30 seconds or so, and uh, then we'll get into the questions. <laughs> So we'll start with uh... My name is Cheryl LaBar. I am a small business owner from Hayward, Wisconsin. And a, uh, can you hear me? I don't think it's on, is it? I don't think it's on. Oh, it's on, oh I get technical. i got to learn how to turn it on. Okay. Testing. There you go. <laughs> Hello, I'm Cheryl LaBar. I'm a small business owner, a wife, a mom, a U.S. Navy veteran, pro-life, pro-Second Amendment candidate, running for 87th District Assembly, and we'll be real pleased to uh, represent you in Madison. Hi, I'm Mike Bob. I'm from Medford here. Uh, I'm recently retired after 28 plus years working for uh, Tombstone Craft Nestle Pizza. Uh, I've been on the Medford School Board, been President of the School Board. I'm currently on Medford City Council. I have over 15 years actively still involved in local government. Um, I've been real involved in the community. Um, I'm looking forward to being your next representative in Madison so that I can represent you to do a good job and to protect your rights down in Madison. Thank you. Hi there, I'm Scott Kenneth Noble. Um, I am also a small business owner, a uh, landlord, and a uh, teacher. Uh, trained in social work and teaching, social studies broadfield, and Sociology, also social work, rural and Native American. I uh, look forward to uh, meeting you and answering your questions, and I uh, look forward to uh, winning your vote on August 12th to uh, represent you in Madison. Good morning. My name is Jimmy Boy. On the ticket, on the ballot, I'm James W. Edming. Friends and neighbors call me Jimmy Boy. That's been my nickname since I was about a year old. Uh, I'm a multiple business owner in, in Glen Flora, Wisconsin, up in Russ County. Uh, I've lived in the, in, the, in the 87th Assembly District for 68 years, with the exception of the years that I went to college and the years that I taught at Osseo Fairchild uh, as, as a school teacher. Uh, I own a convenience store and metal stamping business. Uh, like I say, I've, I, I, my, roots, my roots run deep. My grandfather was not the first man to come to Glen Flora, but he was the first one to come there. 1886. So I have investments in, in, in the 87th Assembly. I have three sons, two granddaughters, and one great-granddaughter, and that's why I'm running, to make certain that, that the 87th and that Wisconsin stays on the right track that we're presently on. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, we'll get into our uh, questions. The uh, uh, format is I have a series of prepared questions. The candidates haven't, haven't seen any of these questions. I have no idea what's on these questions. Uh, the, uh, and we're, we drew numbers, and they're one, two, three, four in the order that they're in. So we will start with each candidate. We'll give, a, give an opportunity to answer each of the questions. So, okay. Uh, the first question I have is uh, uh, lack of access to broadband internet and consistent cellular service uh, is limiting development in the district and across rural Wisconsin. Uh, if elected to the legislature, what would you do to promote expansion of the technology infrastructure? Well, we all know that that is a huge issue here. As I live in Hayward, Wisconsin, and I have to travel down here, uh, I cannot even make phone calls. My cell phone doesn't work in many spots, and then I get to a place where it works, and you'll hear ding, 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 and internet as well, and I run a business. So that is something that's extremely important to me. And as business owners in the district, they're very uh, up on this. This is something that's really important. I would work definitely with uh, Senator Petrowski in bringing something forward. Senator Petrowski has been working on this uh, for quite a while. So this is something that I'm not, um, not aware of, and it's something that I live every day. So I certainly will fight very hard to make sure we do what we can. You know, as a candidate, you sit up here and you can't know all the answers. You have to find out exactly what the process is to get to those, but that is on a top priority. Thank you. With education changing, um, I used to take homework home in my folder. Now, often, 
you do your homework on the internet, you do group projects and things, so uh, this is a big issue and it's becoming a bigger issue. The, um, the state has invested a lot of money in increasing the broadband you know, to rural communities, but it's not enough. And so we have to find ways to, you know, to look at the budget, look at where we can take some money from other projects that maybe aren't, aren't quite as critical or maybe where we're spending money that you know, is a little wasteful and we need to seriously speed up the growth of broadband in all the rural communities across the state of Wisconsin because it's affecting the education of our kids. And uh, if we don't have quality education, we don't have a very bright future, so we need to solve this issue, and unfortunately it's going to take dollars and resources to do it. Yeah, I think this is a very important issue. I know in, uh, in the town of Mauder, if you call, depending on what area you're in, to get internet, you probably will be told, well, I'm not sure if that area can be served, and then if you have a neighbor that's already got the service, then you can sometimes work it out where you get it, and that's just not good enough. Uh, also, just internet service uh, is slow if you do get it, and uh, with the education work that people do today, and uh, in the north, we have uh, that as a barrier, and so that's going to be a, definitely an initiative if I'm chosen as your representative. That uh, yeah, it costs money, it costs resources, but it's important to us, and uh, that's the main concern. Well, I have a little different take on it than, than, the, than the other candidates. I realize the, that the internet is very important and, and, and being, being able to catch up on the rest of the world, uh, but I didn't realize that the state of Wisconsin was necessarily in the broadband business or in, in the business to tell cell phone companies that you have to put in X number of towers. That's private business again now. But I think as legislators, we do have to kind of, we have to kind of look at this but that's not, I don't believe that's our main thrust that we're going to do when we're in Madison. That's up to the private cell phone companies. I've got AT&T. Uh, a few years ago they were horrible. Right now they're, they're pretty respectable. At home, we, I can jump on the internet. Uh, uh, and I'm sure there's places up, you get up into Couture, up there really up in God's country, where there is, where there probably isn't. But that's, but that's the business and the duty of free enterprise and, and the businesses to see to it that they have coverage and and you as the citizens of Wisconsin get on the phone and raise cane with them. They'll, they'll listen to you. Are we allowed to reply to any of these? We're going to go through and see if there's time afterwards. Is that like I don't believe minimum wage jobs were ever meant to be um, jobs that provided, um, you know, enough money to support a family and that. I, I think when people talk about raising minimum wage, they think they're going to, you know, help people move up the economic ladder. And I think just the opposite. Instead of creating, you know, increasing minimum wage, how about we create better jobs? How about we create jobs that people can have careers how about we create jobs where people can earn enough money and advance in a company where they can support their family? Um, you know, minimum wage was intended initially for summer jobs, part-time jobs. Um, so when you talk about increasing minimum wage, I think you're going to have a negative impact on the economy. And I still think we need to focus on creating real jobs that provide real income that families can support themselves. I guess the main thing that we're not talking about is why aren't we getting paid enough? I mean, since the institution of the Federal Reserve System in 1913, a dollar was worth 100 cents. Today it's worth 3 cents. And so um, what we're tr constantly doing is dealing with this problem, which is inflation. And uh, if you figure out what we should be making, uh, if you project out what 
three cents today, you know, it's about buying power. It's not necessarily numbers. Um, I don't, we're not getting paid enough. So I wouldn't stand in the way of, of a minimum wage increase, but it's not going to deal with our problem. It probably isn't going to pay us what we uh, should be paid or what we need to, you know, to provide for families and to, um, you know, the buying power we need to put gas in our tank, uh, food on our table, and a roof on our heads. I look at, at the minimum wage in, in my own everyday life as a, as a convenience store owner and as, as a private businessman. Um, if you raise the minimum wage to whatever they want to have it at, Edmund Oil Company is going to be down to two people, Marty and myself probably. There isn't enough money there to, uh, to, to pay, to pay, to pay the, the, the increase that they're demanding. And there again, I have never ever had to worry about a minimum wage for myself. If I wasn't make, that's one of the reasons I discontinued teaching school, because I needed to make more money. I was working three jobs at that time, uh, and that's been a hundred years ago. So, you know, it was you didn't make, you didn't make a whole heck of a lot of money teaching school. I started out at four thousand dollars a year, and and my idea is if if I'm not making enough money where I'm at. Move on. Go find another job. You, you, you know, you're not married to a to a job where you have to stay there for, for 40 some years. You know, but the minimum wage, the minimum wage increase is going to drive more businesses out of Wisconsin, uh, and and we need to keep we need to keep businesses here, and we need to attract new ones. I live in a, uh, a city, Hayward, as I said. That is a service industry, uh, service-oriented industry. We are a tourism district, our area. And these uh, jobs that are minimum wage are very necessary where I'm at. It's, um, it's something that you struggle with because at $7.55 an hour, it doesn't seem like that's a livelihood type position. But there are a lot of them in my area. I, I wouldn't be, I, I'm not for raising the minimum wage to $10 an hour. That will, as a small business owner, put people out of business. People are scared about that. They're talking about it. I uh, sit on Wisconsin Manufacturers of Commerce, their small business committee, and I go to Madison quarterly for that. And that is one of the biggest fears of that because there are many businesses across the state that will have to raise their prices. I run a plumbing business. I would have to pass that on to you. And it becomes a very burden. And that is not something that I'm looking at doing. So no, I'm not in favor of raising the minimum wage to $10 an hour. What is your understanding of the Common Core uh, education standards, uh, and do you think that uh, we should be following the lead of, uh, of Governor Walker in, in dropping the Common Core, or is there uh, any way to salvage it? What is your thoughts on that? Well, I wouldn't be following the lead of Governor Walker because I've been on the lead for this for a long time. Um, I've always opposed Common Core state standards, and uh, as a teacher, um, teachers don't like having to teach to the test. You know, we want to have critical thinking skills taught. We don't want to uh, teach students. We want to teach students how to think, not what to think. And uh, this is probably one significant difference between me and Michael Buck. Uh, you know, in the Wisconsin Eye interview, you know, he said he supported. It. Uh, at least what we've done so far, which is English and math. And now we're getting into the more political aspects. I can tell you as a social studies teacher, social studies and science is extremely political. And the last thing we want to have to do is have Washington deciding what we're going to be teaching our kids in the Medford School District, in the Hayward School District, in Ladysmith, Flambeau, Winter. We want to have local control of our schools, bottom line. And I will adamantly oppose in every way and fashion, if I'm elected as your representative, to stop Common Core. Common Core is kind of a pet peeve of mine. Um, I think that what we teach our kids in, 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 in Medford and, and Flambeau and, and, and Ladysmith and Hayward is, is a lot different than what they teach kids in California. Uh, and when you start, when you start having where the, where the government is starting to tell you what you're going to teach your kids, that's taking away from, 
from our decisions of what we want our kids to, to learn. Uh, um, one example that I use is, is in, in northern Wisconsin, we have to wear long underwear uh, six months out of the year. Let's make everybody in California wear long underwear six months out of the year. And that's about as much sense as what this Common Core has. And I'm, and I'm with Governor Walker on this one. Uh, knock it out. I would have to say that I support Governor Walker on this also. I have been against Common Core all along. But with that being said, Common Core was implemented um, it, back when Governor Doyle accepted the money. And so the state has already spent the money. I don't know if you're aware of that or not, but that's a really important issue. Because Common Core has already been implemented in the schools. And this September, they're going with two more. And, and basically, now we have it. So now what are we going to do? We accepted the money federally, and now we have to deal with that. And I believe that's what Governor Walker's looking at right now. And that's what we need to do. We need to follow along with that. Because all of us really do care about the education of our kids. I sat on the school board in Hayward two terms. And I can tell you, my fight all along was about what's right for the kids in Hayward School District. Just like I'm sure anyone else serving on any kind of board, their fight is for the people that are in their district, in their area. And so I know that there's probably things in Hayward that they're like log rolling, I was telling someone, that they probably don't do in Medford. So, you know, these are things that I really believe in, but I do believe that we need to look at Common Core. We've accepted the money. We can't just go, oh, it's gone, because it's going to cost. They want to teach in Common Core are incorrect, and I oppose those. Just real quick, I think you should probably let us have the Sure, we've got a few minutes. We can, we can do that at this point. If there's anybody who would like to make another comment. In response to Mr. Bob, um, just review the tape. I mean, it speaks for itself. And what he said right now is that uh, he wants the local school districts to handle it. Local school districts are not going to stop Common Core. He's just going to go whichever way the wind blows. Now, Governor Walker is asking the legislator to do it because of pressure from people like me that are against it. And the Wisconsin Governors Association is the one who put this into place. This has been going on for five, six years now. Common Core is here. It's not coming. You know, school board hasn't done anything, any of the school boards. And I'm not in favor of state standards either. I'm in favor of the ultimate local control. But there's nothing that we can do now by calling a school board member. It's I mean, basically, they're going to tell you, well, we've been doing this for six years. The money's there. Um, sorry, can't help you. This has to be dealt with at the state level. What we need to do is opt out of Common Core from the federal government. And that's what I'll support. And that's something that none of these other uh, candidates will. So. That's not necessarily true. Um, we'll you know. Go the, we'll go in the order. Okay. Same order there. Sorry. That's all right. Oh, no, I lost my train of thought. Sorry, Jim. Oh. In response to uh, what Mike had said, uh, if I have a choice of having Washington, D.C. dictate what, they're, what we are going to teach my grandkids and my great-grandkids, or if I can have the local, legis the local legislature from Madison, someone that's representing me in the 87th Assembly District, I'll take the local control any day over what Washington says. I support that as well. I would definitely uh, look at it on the local issue. Obviously, the school boards have already, they, they were, the school boards really weren't responsible for this. It came down from the Department of Public Instruction. So it's already in force, and what we need to do now is, we, as parents, truthfully, we need to pay attention to what our kids are being taught, and if you don't like it, you need to go to the school, and you need to talk to them about it. And I spoke to, I sat down with superintendents in this district, in one of them here in Medford, I sat down with Mr. Sullivan and we had a very long conversation. I sat down with the curriculum director as well within that same meeting. And it was very interesting listening to what they had to say about Common Core. I also talked to uh, teachers in Hayward that I know very well that teach advanced placement classes. They were telling me right to my face that this Common Core is not going to change how they're teaching. It's not going to change their curriculum at all. It's just giving them benchmarks, basically, something to reach for. So, you know, I think what Governor Walker is looking at is saying we need to make sure that our kids in the state of Wisconsin are educated properly. We've always given, our students here do well. They do well across the state, they do well nationally. 
So let's look at that and let's make it better. But as far as the federal government, I don't think we should take any more money from them on anything to do with Common Core. Thank you. Each school district in Wisconsin has some amazing teachers, and some of them have different styles of teaching. In Medford, uh, we have a gentleman in third grade, Mr. Waller, that does an amazing job, and he teaches different than some of the other third grade teachers, and he reaches his kids, and he educates them. That's what I'm talking about, local control. I don't want to say, okay, everybody has to teach this way. I want people to, to be able to be creative in the classroom and reach kids. It's important that we reach kids and we educate kids. The way we reach kids in Kenosha and Racine and Milwaukee might be a little bit different than we do in Hayward and Ladysmith and Medford. And that's what I'm talking about, local control. I don't think local control that you believe in something part of the time. You either believe in it all the time, or you can't say, well, I like local control now, but yeah, for this topic, not. And it, that's, that's why I really believe that it's critical that you know, the school districts set their curriculum, the school districts set their methods of, of teaching. Uh, we'll go to the next go to the next question now. Okay. Um, starts with you, okay. Uh, with road maintenance costs and demand for services increasing, traditionally frugal town governments are getting squeezed by levy freezes. Do you feel that levy freezes are necessary or are they infringing on local control? Well, first off, with the, with the, the the road tax and, and, and the highway fund, uh, that's something that Governor Walker inherited. When Jim Doyle was the governor, he absolutely raided the, 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 the tax money out of the, out, out of the road tax and threw that into the general fund. So when you start a business and you have a turnkey business for the most part, which Wisconsin had, which Governor Walker got, your checkbook is empty. And what's happened is, the, remember in the olden days, they talked about electricity being penny cheap. And all of a sudden, your, your, your rates went up because people were using less electricity. And that's the same identical thing that's happened to our gas tax. And the gas taxes are, they haven't changed, and they better not change. I signed the Taxpayer's Bill of Rights, where I will not vote to increase your taxes. And, and we may have to put some of these things on hold. We're going to have to prioritize uh, uh, and look and look at some other avenues. But the main problem that we have right now is coming from the from the eight years before Governor Walker took over, and and it's a real problem. But we can we can solve it. I, I love I love a challenge in business, and that's that's what I plan on doing. I am someone who believes in local control, and I do believe that uh, locally it's a, it's a tough gig when you're trying to, you know, make sure that you take care of all the roads and everything else, the infrastructure in your area. And we run into that all the time. As a matter of fact, this past winter, I'm sure, I don't know how many of you had a chance, I don't know how bad it was here, but in Hayward, Wisconsin, we had like three to four feet of snow up until the middle of April at some point. So, um, yeah, we had, our roads were torn to smithereens. And I'm sure if these gentlemen have been in Hayward at all, they can tell you, or if anyone else has been up in Hayward, our roads were terrible. And just recently, they did redo some roads right in the middle of summer, which is our busiest time of the year. But, you know, it was done. And I do believe that uh, the transportation fund is very serious. It's serious. And what gets me is it's a double-edged sword, because now that we've got vehicles out on the road that are better, we now are dealing with the fact that we have less money coming in. Uh, I am certainly against any kind of a gas tax because I own a small business and I have a plumbing business and we spend already a month about $1,500 to $1,700 a month in fuel and it is very expensive and it's, it, it's a large part of your budget when you look at that when you're a small business. So I think that um, as a representative, you know, like I said, we can all sit up here and say what we want to say, but you have to find out what the process is. I think meeting with towns associations and talking to the people that are in that area, something that I've always talked about that I've wanted to do, and I've talked to people during this, this tour, this campaign tour, and spoke to them and said, you know, an ad hoc committee, I've sat down with mayors, I've sat down with school districts, I've sat down with hospital administrators, and uh, towns associations, and just county, uh, county board members, and uh, just spoke to them and said, what would you think about having like an ad hoc committee meeting once a quarter? sit down with me, tell me what's going on, because then you can be the messenger to take that to Madison. 
And I think that's what the job is. You've got to talk to the people around in the areas. You have to be able to represent them. And I'm a bulldog when it comes to that. And anyone that knows me knows that. I have been fighting in the Northland for over 10 years. I fought for the mine for, 10, for years. I fought for the mine since 2010. Uh, I sat with uh, Mary Williams at every single hearing. I sat for hours. I testified at every single hearing. I traveled all over this, the state. I've done that with many different issues, the concealed carry, many issues. So I am ready to go to work for this area and I will fight for transportation, infrastructure, broadband, and everything else we need in this area. I thought this question started off talking about revenue limits for uh, the counties and townships. So let me comment on that, but then I want to talk about transportation also because that seems, seems the way we've drifted. Um, as far as local revenue caps and limits, I, I, those have done a great job of controlling property tax. Um, I would like to see the limits stay in place. I would like to see there be an avenue that if the local taxpayer wants to have a referendum to exceed them, that's their choice. Again, being a person who believes in local control, I sincerely believe you know, that people have a right to say, if we want this and we want to pay for it, that's our choice. So um, controlling property tax is important, and I think the levy limits have done a good job, and we should continue those. As far as the transportation, this is really complicated. Uh, you know, the state legislature passed a constitutional amendment that will be on the November ballot where we, we will vote, hopefully if we vote yes, that you can no longer raid the transportation fund to fund other parts of the budget. And uh, I would encourage people to vote yes on that. I think it's critical that we never do this. Uh, the Doyle administration took $1 billion. Now I find it ironic that with $600 million short in transportation budget, we could use that $1 billion right now. But there's no easy answer here. Uh, gas tax is something that people want to talk about, but the problem is, is that you now have vehicles that don't pay gas tax. You have electric vehicles, you have hybrid vehicles, you have uh, propane vehicles. Uh, they, they don't pay gas tax, but yet they use the roads. So I think this is going to be something where the state legislature is going to have to make this a priority, where we're going to have to sit down. A, we have waste in the transportation budget today. If you go down to Dane County, you go over to Oshkosh, we're putting county seals on bridges. They don't make the bridges any safer. They don't make the bridges any stronger. They make them prettier, but it's a lot of tax dollars. Over $22 million last year was spent on what they call com uh, community enhancement projects. Uh, we have two pedestrian slash bus stops up in the roundabouts here in Medford. $80,000 taxpayer money just wasted. Um, we need to stop wasting money, get it back on the road projects, because the counties, the rural counties, need to get their roads fixed. Uh, with the changes in, in some of the farm bills now, there's going to be heavier equipment on the roads, and these roads aren't going to handle it if we don't start getting them repaired. Thank you. Well, this is one of the areas that are also uh, differ with Mr. Bubb. Um, on the one hand, we're talking about supporting a referendum at the state to you know, make sure that we keep the transportation fund from getting robbed, but then we want to raise levy limits at the local level using under the guise of local control. Now, uh, while we're talking about, I know we mentioned like what's good for Racine and Milwaukee and Kenosha, this is a good example. Um, We've had most of our you know, discussion so far as sounds like um, Milwaukee style politics is going good. Um, we'll support the governor in everything he does. Um, we do have, with regard to the gas tax, I feel a difference. You know, the administration has been campaigning from you know, town to town, uh, from the transportation director you know, at your local chamber of commerce, speaking in favor of a gas tax. A gas tax is something that the North cannot afford to have. We drive too far to work. Some of us, hour, hour and a half, one way. Um, tourism, how will that affect tourism? Gas, we sell fun. And if people come here broke, how are they going to fill up the ATV? How are they going to fill up the boat? How are they going to fill up the truck? How are they going to get here? So this is something where I'm different than the other candidates. You know, if you're going to follow Milwaukee-style politics, vote for Mike Bug. 
And if you want to have a representative that will look at what is best for us and represent our interests and say no to the gas tax, then I'm your guy. Now, with regard, we mentioned referendums. Here's a good example of levy limit raising. In the school district of Medford, we have a $21 million budget. Now, Michael Bubb supported having it increased by $10 million to basically fund a fitness center. You know, not one dime of that $10 million would go to educate children. And that's our concern in the school district of Medford. We want to educate children. In any school district, your ultimate goal is to educate children, not to build fitness centers. And, you know, the voters spoke really loudly when they voted 56% to deny that levy limit increase of $10 million, which is essentially a 30% tax increase. And you project that out to our state budget. Can you imagine a 30% tax increase in the state budget? That's what we have at stake here. Someone that thinks that that's okay. So if you really want to have taxes discussion, I'm your tax person. Most of what I've heard here so far is let's try to keep the taxes either the same or slightly raise them. I mean, that's more Washington politics. Cutting is cutting how much we'll raise taxes. I want to lower taxes. We're taxed enough already. I want to actually be a true tax critic and say let's lower taxes. So. I'm your lower tax choice. Taylor, yes. Of course you want to make a comment. <laughs> well, yes. we'll start it, we'll go back in the same order. So, yeah. Well, I'm a member of the Wisconsin Association of Convenience Stores, and it's just been brought to my attention that we're talking about another gas tax. You ought to, you ought to be the guy collecting money at the gas pump and, 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 and have gas go up a few cents, I'll tell you. I'm the guy that they that they give it to. If if the if the if the association is is talking about putting another gas tax through, they haven't mailed th nothing to me. I don't know where you come up with that wacky idea, but that's uh, that's so far from the truth. It's pathetic. I'm not talking about the association. I'm, I'm talking about the transportation department of Governor Walker's office supports no, a gas tax. We're gonna go in that order. No, they, uh, I'm just gonna tell you that. I am not about raising taxes. I have never been about raising taxes. And I think if you sat here and listened to what everyone said, if you really heard it, you would have heard that. Not one of us said we wanted to raise gas tax. I, I, I myself personally um, said immediately no to a gas tax whenever I was asked at any kind of forum or any kind of questionnaire or any interview that I've been on. And I highly suggest that you go on and watch the Wisconsin I videos because these are really important to look at and see because this person is going to be your next representative and you want to make sure that you're making the right decision and so many times in politics we don't we like somebody or we don't like somebody and we just make that decision and we don't know the name we don't pay attention we don't go to websites we don't look at Facebook pages we don't pay attention and I'm telling you as a person who's been involved in this kind of stuff for years you need to pay attention to who you're going to vote for Please do that. And I am not for any gas tax, and I am certainly not a puppet of Governor Walker. If Governor Walker does something that I don't agree with, I make it very clear already. I have Governor Walker's email address. I make it very clear to him that I don't support it. I make my voice heard, and I will continue to do that. You know, when I decided to run for office, there's one thing that I was you know, kind of made a promise to myself is that I was going to try and be a different candidate. I was going to try and be consistent. I'm going to try and be honest. I don't twist people's words. I don't imply things that aren't true. Clearly, you know, Scott Noble wants to, for some reason, he's attacked me multiple times this morning. He's attacked me on Wisconsin I, And he's, and he, he's taking partial facts and twisting them. Um, I've never set up in here today and say I wanted to increase the gas tax. I never said anything that I wanted to have Milwaukee politics up here. Uh, those aren't things that I've said yet. Um, he continues to imply those about me. Um, I don't support a gas tax, but I do realize that we have to take care of the roads. We have to, we can't continue. Lady Smith hasn't done a road project in six years. They're doing one this year, three blocks. We have problems with our roads. We have to address them. If all we're going to do is say, well, that this option's off the table, this option's off the table, this option's off the table, then I want to hear people say, 
well, what is the solution? Because it's really easy to say no. And by the way, I don't support a gas tax because I think a gas tax, and I said this on Wisconsin, I hurts low to medium income people the most because they're the ones driving to work each day. So um, I really think you know that uh, you need to take a look at what the facts are. Um, I, I don't endorse Milwaukee politics. I've never heard that before. Uh, but thank you. Milwaukee style politics is if we're going to talk about administrations of the governor, you know, you have either governor, uh, if it, in the last election you had to try to do with association as of anything, this is the, is because of 20% less, less use of gas, which is from, you know, using less fossil fuels, uh, some of us are just driving less, you know, when we absolutely have to, we do. But that means there's 20% less in the transportation budget. That's $650 million they have to raise or else cut it. And we're supposed to have a $1 billion surplus. You know, and yet we're still borrowing 20 plus billion dollars is what we have for debt. So I guess if we're talking about lowering taxes, we have to worry about, you know, where this money's coming from. And we can blame other prior uh, administrations on the road for robbing Peter to pay Paul, which has happened, you know, the transportation fund is the only area of the state government that should be self-funded. We should be building roads, you should be uh, building bridges, you should be taking care of how we get from place to place. That's what transportation is. But as far as uh, the gas tax, that's being, you know, the director of the transportation department is going from place to place lobbying for a gas tax increase. This is one of the southeastern politics I'm talking about. So you can say, I'm for everything that the administration wants to do. And then on the other hand, say, I oppose the gas tax. Well, which is it, Mike Bub? Which is it? Are you for it or against it? He says he's, for the, he's, he's against the gas tax. Okay, so that means he's against Governor Walker on that. This is what I'm trying to talk about. So when we, when we talk about the positions we're talking about, we have to look at what, you know, what's good for this area. And uh, raising taxes is the last thing we want to do, and that's the last thing that I'll put up with. Um, I'll have... <laughs> Sorry. It's a late that last night. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, uh, at this point, we're going to ask you to kind of make some oh, statement God. about it. We're going to pull it into a closing statement. So uh, we'll go with the, I believe it's back to you. As I said before, my name is Cheryl Labar. I'm a small business owner. I'm a U.S. Navy veteran, pro-life, pro-Second Amendment, wife and mom who works very hard and has done that in my community for many, many, many years. Served on the school board two terms. And I am really looking forward to getting to know everyone. I have done my best to get down here as much as I can. It's amazing when I look at the mileage, you know, two and a half hours basically on the road. And I was looking at, uh, you know, talking to people in, in uh, Rib Falls and all these other small townships. And it's amazing, uh, from one end to the other of the district, it's three hours one way to drive. So uh, I certainly would not be want someone that's looking for a gas tax. But I also um, want to just make sure that you know that there are places that you can find out information about us. We all, we, I passed out some literature to people that came earlier, and I will make sure that you get that. And I think you really do need to pay attention to, to what's going on in your community and what's going on in the district. I want to say that Representative Mary Williams uh, has been a friend of mine for many years, and she did a wonderful job. I appreciated all that she's done, and I want to continue to do that. Uh, Senator Petrowski, I've become very close to him over the years, and uh, we have a good working relationship already. So I would like to be the next representative. I know I will work hard. Um, I'll do the best I can to represent the whole area. And I would spend my time up here. Madison is not my favorite place. I call it like it's a little 30-mile cesspool covered around reality. So we are the reality out here. They have no clue what it's like when they say that they go to the north. It cracks me up when they say they go to Eau Claire. It just makes me laugh because Hayward's another hour and a half, half north of there. So that's not north to me. I will be a very strong voice for the Northland. That is what I have fought for all along, and that is what I will continue to do. 
Thank you very much for coming out, and thank you for putting this on, Brian. Really appreciate it. I know it takes a lot of time, and I know you're tired from spending volunteering here, because I know how it is in small communities. So I just want to thank everyone, and make sure that we you know, get a chance to chat, because I'll be around for a while. So have a good day, and have fun at the fair. Hello, I'm Mike Buck. I'm running for State Assembly because I want to represent you. I've been involved in this community for 28 years. And I'm school board for nine, president of the school board for eight years, currently on the city council, teach religious education, member of the Kiwanis Club. I head up a charitable organization called Medford Area for Tomorrow Incorporated. Um, I try to make a difference in this community. When I retired from Tombstone slash Nestle slash Kraft Pizza last August, um, I wasn't sure what I was going to do. Then Mary Williams announced she was going to retire. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to try and do for the 87th District what I've been able to do for the Medford area. I want to go down there. I want to represent you. I want to listen to you. I want to be your voice in Madison. Sometimes it's a lot of politicians talk about what they believe in. I actually think as a representative, I'm supposed to represent what you believe in. There's 39,000 people in this district. I want to represent them. I've, I've been going since March to community to community to community, knocking on doors. I shook the hand of over 3,000 people so far. Um, and I've been listening to them, and I want to be a representative. I think you know, that my experience in local government, my experience in growing Tombstone Pizza from a $100 million to a $2 billion business will all benefit me in helping to solve complex problems while listening to you to be your representative of Madison. So on August 12th, as I always say to people, remember this bump's for you, and I appreciate your support and your vote on August 12th. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank everybody for coming, and I'd like to thank uh, Star News uh, for hosting. And uh, I, my name is Scott Noble. Um, I know um, we talked uh, mostly about specific uh, questions and none of them really came up regarding pro-life and I wanted to make sure that I let everyone know that I'm exclusively endorsed by Pro-Life Wisconsin which is a 100% pro-life organization. So um, I believe life begins at conception. So that's one significant difference uh, between me and the others. Um, I am a former alderman. Uh, teacher, social worker, um, uh, Wisconsin gun owners gave me the highest rating, A, uh, NRA, AQ rating. I'm an advocate of states' rights. Um, that's a way we can you know, fight these overreaches like the Affordable Care Act, and we can uh, opt out of Obamacare if we so choose. Um, we can opt out of Common Core. Um, we can make decisions that are best for us. I want to be your representative. I'm not saying things up here that I necessarily have as my own agenda. I have been talking to a lot of people, and the things I'm talking about are the things that I'm hearing from you. And so I, I want to be your representative. Uh, two campaign promises I've made is I plan on working at least one day in every school district in the 87th Assembly, if they'll have me. And then that evening, I'd like to be able to have uh, a town hall meeting where I talk to friends, neighbors, parents, teachers, administrators about what's important to them in educating their children. The other campaign promise is um, I have a campaign office in the corner of 8 and 27 in Ladysmith and you know that right now is a campaign office but if chosen as your representative I want to make that our Northwoods Legislative Welcome Center. I want to have a place where you can go and not have to chase people down in Madison, you know. We want to have a representative that can meet you right nearby, right in the district. So that's a, two campaign promises that I can make for you, and uh, I look forward to meeting you. I'll be around, and uh, thank you very much for having me. It's been a pleasure. I've got a million things I'd like to say now. <clears throat> I think it's on. It's on. No, it's on. It's on. First off, uh, I've made this publicly known uh, many times. 
that I will not, I will not sling mud. If there's a fact that someone is accusing me of, I'll fight it. Uh, but I, I will not, I will not sling mud. Uh, uh, my campaign office is not going to be in Ladysmith. It's not going to be in Madison. Well, it'll be in Madison too, but, but it's going to be at my home, and it's also going to be at your home. You don't have, you don't have to call me, or you don't, you don't have to come and see me. If you want to talk to me, you give me a call. On this, on this card that I, that I pass out, there's a cell phone number on there, and that cell phone number rings on this phone. So I'm as close to you as, as I am to, uh, uh, to, to the telephone. And I'd like to also add, this is my fourth run uh, in the 87th. I, I run for state senate against Russ Decker in the 29th for three years, three, or three terms. So all four of my races have been right here. And Taylor County and Russ County has been in those races every time. Uh, as far as my, my past, what I've done, uh, presently I'm on the Russ County Board of Hos uh, Russ County Hospital Board. We're turning that hospital around. It's coming, it's coming good. I'm a member of an organization called Bugles Across America. And this is what I can give to our veterans. There's 160 of us in the state of Wisconsin, uh, and we play taps at military funerals. So if you ever need a bugler for a, uh, uh, for a military funeral, go to Bugles Across America. They throw it out there, and whoever is the closest bugler gets to do it. I also have been endorsed by Wisconsin Right to Life. I, I didn't realize that I wasn't, because I got a letter on it that said I am. Uh, I'm also, a, uh, was, uh, uh, chosen as the candidate from the Wisconsin Farm Bureau. There's about 400 farmers, 400 plus farmers in Russ County, about the same number in Sawyer, and there, I understand there's well over a thousand in, in, uh, in, in Taylor County down here. But when I'm in office, I will do what I do best, and that's create jobs. That's what I've done for, for, for uh, 42 years. Have you ever heard of the, 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 the pizza business called Jimmy Boy Pizza? I started that company. If you go down to your local grocery store and find an Ovenworks pizza, that's one of my creations. And those businesses are still going today. But uh, when I'm in Madison, like I say, I want to help. I want to help entrepreneurs. I want to help people put businesses together. Because without a job, you can have whatever you want, but you can't buy nothing. And we, we need jobs up in this Northwoods, and we need good paying jobs. And that's, and that's what I'm all about. And with that, I appreciate your vote. I'll be around afterwards. Uh, uh, and again, I'm as, close, I'm as close as my telephone to you. But you don't have to come and track me down. Just give me a call. I'll come and see you. Thank you. Thank you guys very much for coming down here and taking some time out of your busy uh, schedule. So thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.